All right. Hello, everyone. Um, again, quick plug, you know, check the comments. You know, I have my amazing course there and everything. Um, so this episode is about the more like complex values, right? So we, we already covered like, okay, if we want to change, you know, some property of a part, let's say we want to change the transparency, that needs a number, right? If we want to change can collide, that's a Boolean. So that's true or false. If we want to change the name, then that's a string, right? Fairly easy. How would we change the size? Okay. How do we, how, how would we, would we change the C frame? What is a C frame, right? So these are all questions that, you know, I, I want to answer in this uh, episode. So here's how this works. Okay. If we look at our part as an example, it has size over here, and this size contains an X, Y, and Z value. Okay. That's kind of the idea here. It has an X, a Y, and a Z. So if I want to change the parts size, part dot size, it, it tells me here, okay, the size is a vector three value. So, okay, so equals to vector three dot new. And as you can see here, an X, a Y, and a Z. So a vector three needs three numbers. One of them being the X, one of them being the Y, and one of them being the Z. So this, this checks out. So I could do something like 10, comma 10, comma 10. And so what this is going to do is it's going to set the part size so that every single number is going to be 10, 10, 10. So instead of being four, one and two, as it is right now, all of these are going to be 10. So if I, if I played the game right now and we, you know, we change the part size, as you can see, it is a bigger part now, right? Because all of it is just 10, 10 and 10, you know, very nice. My battery is running low. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of the idea of vector three. You have a vector two as well, which is a 2D value, right? So something like new. So vector two just needs an X and a Y, right? No Z. So vector two is like for a 2D area, right? That's the idea. And now let's talk about a C frame, okay? So part dot C frame is equal to a C frame. What is a, what is a C frame exactly, right? So a C frame is a mix of both position and orientation, okay? Now, the thing about C frame, which is interesting, right, is that you would expect that like, okay, you know, we make it equal to a C frame dot new, like so. And then you'd expect that, okay, it probably wants the position, which is an X, Y, and Z. So it's going to be a vector three and it needs the orientation, which is also a um, X, Y, and Z. So you would expect that, you know, we would need two vector threes. However, not quite. If you want to change the position of the C frame, then you just do do this so you say okay yeah vector three dot new and we can make it the position equal to like zero 20 zero i don't know something like this and so if i play the game right now what it's going to do is it's going to set the parts position to be zero 20 zero like so so before the part was you know somewhere around you know here now the part is right above me that's pretty nice if i want to change the parts uh c frame rotation right what i do is then I say part dot C frame. So on a new line, part dot C frame is equal to C frame dot angles. And so what this is going to do is it's going to then change the rotation. So for here, for example, right, if I want the part to be rotated, I don't know what this negative 30 do. Yeah, if I want the part to be rotated like this, right? So we want the Z to be negative 30. What you do is you say zero comma zero comma math dot rad negative 30 like so so what this is going to do is it's going to change the position first and then it's going to change the orientation now the one issue with this though if i play this right now then it's going to you know set the c-frame to be you know this position but then when it sets the c-frame to be this then by default its um position is going to be zero right so it's actually not going to be above me it's going to be at zero, zero, zero. So it's gonna be inside the, the, the base plate. So the way a C-frame works, right, is so we can create a C-frame like so, make it new. And a C-frame will take the position and it will also take where we want the part to look at, right? So for example, the position could be vector three dot new, zero, 10, zero, okay, like so. So it's gonna, it's gonna spawn 10 studs above this base plate because the base plate is at zero, zero, zero. But then what it needs is it needs a position to look at, okay? And so what we could do is we could say, 
just, you know, we, we can make it look at the spawn location dot position. So I can say, you know, workspace dot spawn location dot position like so. And so if I were to, you know, play the game right now, then let's see what happens. Yeah, there we go. So as you can see, uh, this is the front of the part, right? So, so this face right now is the front of the part and that's why it's pointing down onto the spawn location, right? So that, that, that's kind of the idea here. That's what, that's what a C-frame does, right? It takes the, the actual position of the part and then it actually like, you know, like th th this is this is the um, the position that it's gonna look at, right? Or like at least it's front facing side. So for this part, it seems like, you know, one of these sides is its front side. And, and that's why it got this like weird orientation. Um, yeah, because, yeah, so this side of the part seems to be the front and so it's facing over here, right? Um, yeah, so that's it, it about C frames. We talked about color already. So, you know, color is color three dot new or dot from RGB. So we talked about that. Uh, I don't think we discussed brick color yet. And so what <laughs> the way brick color works is it needs a brick color, right? And as you can see in this code example, the way you make a brick color is you say brick color dot new, and then you actually give it the name of the color. So brick color equals brick color dot new, and then you give it an actual name, right? And over here, it gives you all the names. So you can make it equal to fog, cork, gold, you know, and it just, it just goes on and on. Bright bluish violet. <laughs> so if I, if I play the game right now, then our part is going to be bright bluish violet. Yeah, I have no idea if you can see it, but there is a slight difference in color, which we can confirm by going over here. And yeah, so now it's bright bluish violet. There we go. So that's kind of the idea behind colors. Now, the last value that you should know about is a value which um, is how you would change GUI, okay? So this isn't a GUI tutorial, but if you do have a GUI, so like, you know, screen GUI, um, I don't know, like button or whatever, image button, right? Which I actually, I, 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 I do have a GUI um, like series as well, so you can always check that out. And I do have a GUI course, which again, course plug, you know, whatever. Um, screen GUI, image button. How GUI works is that it also has a size, but it has an X and a Y, and the X and, and both Y, they have a scale and offset. So in short, scale means like it's scaled to your screen, so when every screen is going to look the same. Offset means it uses the pixels on your screen. So right now it's 100 by 100 pixels, meaning that on like a, on a big computer that has a bunch of pixels, this GUI will look smaller than on like a small phone that has a lot of pixels, right? But so, so, so like offset, you know, relies on pixels. Scale relies on the percentage of the screen, right? Um, yeah, that's kind of the idea here. And the way you would change the size is you would use a UDIM2 value, right? So the way you do it is you would say UDIM2.new, like so. And then the UDIM, the UDIM value would need four numbers, right? It would need an X, scale and an x offset and the y scale and a y offset right exactly like it is here right the size it's an x scale x offset and a y scale y offset if you just wanted to change the x for example then you could say um you could just use a udem a regular udem and a regular udem only wants a scale and an offset right so so a udem 2 is kind of like a combination of two udems right which is why it's called the UDIM2. And the very last um, complex value you should know about is what is what's called an enum, okay? So let me show you. What if you wanted to change the shape of a part inside of a script, okay? So right, we can change it to be a ball, right? Or we can change it to be a corner wedge, or a cylinder, or a wedge, right? Or a block, like it is right now. How would we go about changing the shape of this part? So if I right now say part dot shape, as you can see, it's an enum dot parts type. Okay. So anytime you want to change something that has this like list thing, right? So anytime you, you want to change a property, that's a list. That's when it uses something called an enum. Okay. So part dot shape is equal to enum dot. And then here you can get a bunch of values, right? So you can get the values that are UI theme. You can get a rig type, a GUI type, add shape, axis, limb, normal ID, platform, rest pose, severity, view mode, right? 
So what we want is we want part type. And then we do dot, and then it gives us all of the you know parts that we can use. So shape, you know, ball, block, corner, wedge, cylinder, wedge. And then this gives us ball, block, wedge, cylinder, corner, wedge, right? There we go. So that's how you would change a list property. You use enums. And let's see, that should, and yeah, there we go. It's now a ball. <laughs> Splendid. Um, and yeah, so I believe this covers all of the, you know, like advanced properties and everything. In the next episode, we're going to be going over tables. We're going to be going over dictionaries. So we're going to be going over basically like scripting values, you know, like advanced scripting values. And then later on, we're going to talk about the difference between, you know, the server script, a local script and a module script. And that'll basically sum up this entire amazing GUI scripting tutorial. So yeah, so when you're ready, you know, you can feel free to move on to the next episode.